And it's Bourbon Blog Live. We're hanging with our friends from Whistle Pig Rye Whiskey. It's Gregory Gaddy and Doug Ward. And we're going to be trying the Whistle Pig Boss Hog Magellan's Atlantic here in just a few minutes. But first, we'll talk about some other things. We'll lead up to the big act here. But it's always it's always a delicious and big act with you, gentlemen. How's everything going at Whistle Pig? No. Thanks, man. It's been a, a trying year for us. Just as I'm sure it has been for every other brand and small brand, but it's uh, we're, we're very fortunate um, to be sitting where we are at, at, at midpoint of October and right. really excited to get a lot of these, you know, limited time offerings like our, our boss hog into market. Um, obviously, we can talk a little bit more about some of the home stock and some other barrels that are landing, but it's really it's a fun time of year for all of us. Because as we all know, this is whiskey season. It starts to get cold, and uh, tis the season. Right? And even where it's not cold, we always like whiskey in this season because we can actually feel like it's whiskey season. We we aspire to make sure that we uh, we have some of that whiskey going through us. You're Doug. You're joining us from uh, Texas, right? Dallas, Texas. Yes, Dallas. sir. And Gregory, whereabouts are you tonight? You know, I'm, I'm in New York. Uh, I was actually hoping to hide out uh, for COVID at the farm in Vermont, but unfortunately, our, our whiskey stocks kept going down and down and down and down. So, you know, they, they sent me back to New York to go start selling again. And and as I was just sharing with you guys, one of the last places I visited uh, right before the pandemic, as far as a distance goes, usually I'm traveling the country hosting these tastings, showcasing great products like Whistle Pig, but I was actually at the farm right before the shutdown happened. So, uh, it was a great last place to be, and I understand I was one of the last guests there. From what I've been told, you were the last official guest. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if we can make up a trophy for you, Tom, or maybe we'll uh, we'll put a, a brick with your name on it somewhere. But uh, you, you definitely get some sort of uh, consolation prize for being the last guest of 2020. <laughs> I, I appreciate. No, we, we're glad to be the last guest at, at Whistle Pig, and not 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 due to behavior or anything else. Again, it was the pandemic. That's why I was <laughs> last guest. We need to make sure we say. Uh, but so so many great things have been happening. Obviously, we've been enjoying reaching for uh, Whistle Pig for so many years, and of course, uh, during the pandemic, using it uh, as a sipper. Of course, we've been grabbing some uh, piggyback, experimenting with some great. Uh, cocktails. One of my, and I think I told you this before, Doug, one of my favorite cocktails that I really had never uh, just gotten all into is the Revolver now. And we use the piggyback and we we love that. Yeah, you get a little bit of an upper with that, don't you too, Tom? You, um, do, you do, and you need yeah. that. You, we definitely need that. It gets but, you through uh, all, the, all, the, all the crazy Zoom calls and uh, your, <laughs> your, your fatigue that comes with the, the neighborhood that you live in and I live in where we're just... Uh, entertaining and, and, and doing education on a day-to-day -day basis. Gregory gets all the boring phone calls and uh, we have to, you know, put on our bow ties and, and I have to do my beard and, you know, uh, I might still be wearing shorts. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> it could happen. You know, <laughs> you, you, you know, you, well, well, you can't see that hurt, right? <laughs> And you know, Tom, the the best part about uh, piggyback, we've been we've been having some fun, especially with the cocktail game. You know, we were trying to come up with ways to keep, continue to keep the cocktail culture alive, even uh, with COVID hitting and all these bars and, and restaurants shut down. So I don't know if, if if Doug had mentioned to you, we started experimenting a little bit with some ready to drink stuff with the piggyback and uh, using our maple syrup and doing some old fashions. So. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to continue to, to keep the cocktail culture alive despite the climate. It's, it's so important. You all have done some great work for, uh, for the hospitality community during uh, the pandemic. And, and as you do always, tell me about the, um, those ready-to-drink cocktails. And, and I, I've got a little tease forward on those. What, what, what do we have to expect for those? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the thought process, again, behind the release this year, we wanted to do something for our on-premise folks that were still staying open. And this the, the idea really hit us when you couldn't go in and drink out. They're only doing takeout service. And Whistle Pig didn't have anything for our friends in the industry. So, you know, the immediate thought of ours was to get our, get our piggyback and then uh, incorporate some of our other favorite ingredients, our maple syrup. And then we partnered with uh, uh, some flavor folks that could help us add some of the orange flavor into the mix as well. And then again, the, the point there was just to, to give people a really high quality, delicious, old fashioned with a little whistle pig twist. 
you know, unfortunately, a lot of the on-premise stuff is still struggling a bit. I think towards the end of the year here, you'll start seeing a few cases go out to the to the retailers as well because we want to still offer our consumers that awesome whistle pick cocktail experience. And you know, this year we're really we're trying it out because of the climate. I, I think it will make a return in 2021 because it was just such an amazing product. But uh, yeah. you know, again, the thought there was to to we wanted to allow our folks and our our fans to continue to drink uh, those delicious cocktails. Absolutely, and those cocktails are going to really be something. Uh, uh, I know that I've heard they're really good. A little bit of maple in this too, is that right? The, the yes, way you're drinking. That's the, the secret sauce for a lot of whistle pick cocktails is uh, our, our not so secret ingredient, the maple syrup. It's it's delicious. And again, it's it's just getting out there more and more. The piggyback, again, age six years, the piggyback is actually, it's the same juice as the tin, but just a little bit younger, right? Yeah, so the, the six year is, uh, this is a 100% rye whiskey in, in the six year. So we're using uh, a specific uh, blend and bond is coming in for for the for the piggyback. You know, the 10 year is, uh, um, we, we the 10 year for us is we're really blending to our flavor profile. Ranges, you know, 98, 99% rye. We might throw a little malted barley in there. It's all about really just making sure we keep that consistent flavor. Excellent, excellent. It, it is really uh, delicious stuff. In fact, tasting a little bit right now uh, does a lot of magic for cocktails. It's a great sipper, uh, just like the tin. But uh, I know it's really been important for the uh, bartending community to have the six-year-old to play with and to also be able to offer cocktails for probably a little smaller a price. Very yeah. true. Back to you know the the on-prem trade and and what we're all about and what started you know when gregory and i began we really only had 10 and everything started from from bars and restaurants so D was the brainchild of making sure that we were still supporting the people that 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 got us to where we are today and you know that's really piggyback was dave's dream at, at the end of the day and that's why you see him iconicized as the pig on the label the 0.56 is an homage to his birth year of 56 and a nice little quote from him on the back as well but yeah, I mean, bartenders, but right now it's for a lot of home bartenders, you know, uh, your revolvers and I've been drinking my old pals. It's, uh, it's, uh, I, I can't wait to go to a, a bar and then order, I, I might just order drinks for random people. I don't even know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, for the basis of, of making sure that the bars and, and restaurants and bartenders, you know, always supported us that we're continuing to support them. That's that's so important. And uh, Gregory, what's been your favorite? Uh, do you have a favorite uh, pandemic co cocktail that's been one of your go tos? Well, for, I have to switch now. I know it's uh, the paper plane is always my that's just probably mm. my favorite cocktail. But we're just about out of, uh, you know, I, I think I need to switch it up to a little warmer, warmer. That's my summer go to drink. So usually, though, for, you know, when it comes to the, the warmer, uh, the colder months, excuse me, it's, it's usually just the whiskey uh, as is. I like that. That's that's always a good go-to <laughs> for, for me as well. And again, if you're just joining us, it's uh, Whistle Pig. We are chatting with Gregory Gaddy and also Doug Ward uh, from the distillery. They're joining us from Texas and from New York. And uh, just we always love being there at the distillery, too, or just, just sipping the whiskey. It always takes us so many places through flavor. And we're about to go someplace uh, really incredible through flavor here in a few minutes. This is um, this Boss Hog for 2020 uh, is the Magellan's Atlantic. And this really does take us someplace, doesn't it? It really does. It is for the people that have followed the Boss Hog series. I mean, I, I think that Gregory and I get on the phone every time we release a new Boss Hog and go like, oh my gosh, this one. But this being the first ever double finished Boss Hog, this being the oldest juice we've ever put into a bottling of Boss Hog, it's 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 a pretty special one, um, and 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 the fun thing about this one as well is that it's actually going to be the first of a, a bit of a series. So there's a little bit of a play here that we can kind of follow where Magellan goes next, as we all know, or hopefully are uh, maybe teaching the homeschooling right now. Magellan was the first to circumvent the globe, right? And so uh, maybe there's a, a little bit of learning that you can. Uh, what's Daddy doing? Oh, he's drinking. <laughs> I like it. Let me tell you a story. It's a lesson and a drink both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, you know, just probably one of the most unique. 
they're all very, very different, right? And the five things that we can always give you and guarantee to, to give you that make Boss Hog what Boss Hog is, right? Is that it's always going to be single barrel. It's always going to be bottled at proof, right? It's always going to be super complex, something we've never done before, right? Which is very key. And no one's ever done before. And then the thing that Dave used to always say, which I think is the the, the, the number five and always uh, the hammer home is stupendous. We will never l- release a boss hog that is not just stupid. Right. Just, just incredible. Something so, so unique and so delicious that uh, we've never had anything quite like it in the world of whiskey. Well, we, we, we always do our homework to see thing has been done any way, shape or form like this or that. And from what we've been able to do our research on, we think it's the first American whiskey ever finished in the Spanish oak. Right. And uh, I don't uh, we've been playing around with the uh, South American teak wood, nam- uh, namely Amberona. And, you know, it, it. I've sold a couple of the single barrel of 12 years of it. And it's such a unique finish. It's so cool and so fun. It throws this uh, Christmas spice. It's, uh, you know, got this allspice and baking spice and almost like, a, you know, cinnamon cookie. Right. So it's it's really rad and really cool. And for people that don't know, what is what is teakwood? So the teakwood is just the the, the 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 type of barrel that we use. It's actually right. Brazilian based, right? Um, and you're going to find that it actually has a uh, a component in it called uh, uh, coumarin, which is actually from folk history used for pharmaceutical or medicinal purposes. But what you get out of this teak wood is that coumarin that actually gives that cinnamon, baking spice, allspice, all those Christmas flavors and that uh, anise and all those things that I was mentioning before. That actually comes from from that inside that that wood and inside that barrel. Believe it or not, you know, we see that go into that barrel for only three days. So it sees the Spanish oak for three weeks. It sees this embryoana, this teak wood, for only three days of influence. And it's really there to help bring out some of the sweeter notes, to balance out some of the heavy, heavy tannins. Because the Spanish oak that we found in northern Spain, it takes three times the amount of wood to make one barrel as it would with American oak. Oh, and it's wow. because of all the knots and how difficult it is to, to actually make the staves. Um, a lot of it's not as porous as, as, as some other barrels. They, they leak. Um, and a lot of people just don't touch it, right? So once again, pushing the envelope as much as we possibly can and, you know, making it maybe a little bit harder than it should. It's our, 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 our way of kind of thinking sometimes. But that's really the, the really super uniqueness of that show, bringing out a just ton of tannin, right? But with a custom toast for an hour, we do all of our Vermont brings out that level of vanilla and all those other things that, you know, you, you want give that complexity of what a boss hog should bring you. Right. It's, it's worth all that extra work that's, uh, that's put into this. And uh, Gregory, what do we, what do we see on top here? I, I, I love how all the boss hogs have something different. What is this on top? Yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful little work from it's pewter. Again, we're sticking true to our good friends at uh, Danforth pewter in, in Vermont. So we use them to come up with always uh, to, to keep in the collection, keep it going with some, right. some beautiful, a beautiful pig up, up top. This one uh, with our little Spanish influence, obviously our little matador on the top of this one. It's a, uh, he's a, he's a beautiful little guy. I'm, I'm, uh, this might I hate to say I always hate picking favorites, but uh, I make sure that this one stays uh, stays in the collection. I really love this top a lot. But, this is you know, I love this. Yeah, but uh, you know I have to say I have to give a shout out to our team. Uh, you know Emily Harrison and, and Megan Ireland. So a- as Doug was saying, you know we get our hands on. Th- they essentially look at all sorts of spirits, uh, everything you know that that spends life time in a barrel. And they try to figure out what would play nice with the the whiskey, and they bring in all these beautiful casks. So for the Boss Hog, it's not only are we we using a beautiful seventeen year old rye that, that the whiskey in and of itself is phenomenal. Yeah. You know, Emily and 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 Megan are are just our mad scientists, kind of coming up with what they think will work, will give us an absolutely exceptional whiskey. 
And this, it, it's truly some of our finest work. Yes, this is incredible. I mean, the fact that it's, first of all, starts at 17 years old, which we so rare, we love the 15 year old that you all do. It's so good. Uh, but you know, when you think about rare whiskey, 17, this, you rarely see a whiskey, a rye whiskey, especially that's 17 years old. It's already something just a real prize in itself, but then these other two barrels, this is just the nose on this is just, uh, as Doug, you mentioned, and I know we talked about the other day that the holiday notes, this, this, all these spices and, and, uh, gingerbread clove. I mean, there's just so much going on just on the nose. The nose, I get so much just kind of almost like a sweet black cherry, that cardamom, those baking spices and rice mm. spice that you're going to you know expect and want. But I, I feel like every three times I put my nose in, I just get so much sweetness and sugar, yeah. right? It's, uh, mm. it's, it's, it's just incredible. And then really on the palate, um, I get the rice spices there, that tannin grip from that Spanish oak, just really, you know, right in the back, you know, just really mm. grips grips your palate um the tannin is serious i mean it just it just really just blows up in the mouth there's it's really it's one of those that there's some whiskeys that i just want to nose because the aroma is just so powerful this is one of those that i just want to spend time nosing and just just really just wrapping my head around it's such a a chewy whiskey to me too like the longer you keep your palate in your mouth and allow those tannins to really take stride Man, that finish is, you know, so, so long, so deep, so complex. Um, I get this kind of, on the, on, the, on, the, on the finish, I get almost like a cherry pie, like a pity cherry pie filling. Right, right. right. Um, kind of, it's, it has that dessert-like nature to it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Gregory, it seems like every time a, a, a new boss hunk comes on, I say, this is now my favorite and then next year, it, it, that always happens. Does that happen to you too? I, I swear every time we do one of these releases, as Doug was mentioning, you know, we usually try to keep a, a collection of them. Uh, you know, I always try to keep a, a few bottles in the back bar so I can compare them next to each other. Yeah. I swear every year we just, you know, again, the team, the team just puts together absolutely, absolutely amazing products. You know, and I, I you, you've witnessed it firsthand, right? You know, when you're, when you're at the farm, we have a bunch of these single finishes lying around because we're, we're experimenting with the wood, seeing what works, what doesn't work. And the, you know, the fun part about going to the farm is you get to try some of the failed experiments as well. But, uh, but yeah, it's this, again, this year, the, the, the reception so far has been amazing. And I, when it, I think of, I know, you know, we're getting into the holiday season here, but with the flavor profile and everything on this whiskey, it just, it, it's the perfect fit for, for the holiday season coming up. It really, and it really is. It's perfect Hol holidays, Thanksgiving, uh, just the notes. Uh, I can think of this as just like this is the really the grand finale to in any amazing feast with or just to really amaze them. You could start with it, too. I mean, it's just it's just it's dynamite. Uh, this is actually going to be out. It's shipping now. It's where can people find this? Yeah, yeah, we, it, it, yeah. Sorry, sorry, leaving the leaving the farm on a truck to different markets every day. Yep. I actually picked up uh, the shipping before we got on just to see what it's gone out. And I saw that <laughs> on Friday, the truck that was headed to Texas. So uh, everybody <laughs> to you. Can, can be on watch for the next weeks. It does take a week or so to get into the market and get to the proper, uh, through the proper channels to the shelf. So uh, be patient. Hopefully by uh, Halloween, we'll all be, uh scary not not scary at the uh retail shelf we'll be able to kind of walk in and grab one that's right It'll, we'll, we'll all dress up like the matador, the big matador. <laughs> What's the big matador? i love it yeah i think you just solved my halloween costume yeah, there it is that's what you have and then if you show up to any part whether it's a virtual party or not they're going to say did you bring that boss on <laughs> what they're going to ask which I'm sure you've done enough events, Tom. You know that that's the first thing out of everybody's mouth whenever we do a, a, a consumer event is, where's the boss hog? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. They're always hoping you have a little bit of, of the boss hog. And uh, again, it's the boss hog. It's the Magellan's Atlantic, 17 years old, finished in two separate casks. And and what a topper. Uh, I mean, you know, people, People go crazy for collecting those Blanton's toppers, but I mean, there's no topper like this in the whole whiskey business. This is something that is just so special and always changes up every year. And uh, the whole, every part of it's a collectible. Um, 
fair, fair, people are asking down below. Some people are saying they're pouring a little bit from last year, from years past. Uh, fairly rare. I mean, what do we? It's it's really limited. If you see a bottle, you probably should get it, right? So you know, I'll let Gregory talk about one of the main reasons why it'll be a little bit thinner of a uh, allocation for okay. all markets. But just think, way it's the same amount that we've done every year. It's ninety barrels, right? right. But I'll, I'll I'll pass it over to Mr. Gregory that handles international markets. You know, as of last year, towards the end, or I think we got to all fifty states finally. Mm -hmm. So this is the first year that we're in all 50 states with a release. And also Gregory has the running total of how many international markets we're currently in. Yeah, for sure. So to Doug's point again, we hit all 50 states in 2019 finally, which was uh, for us was, was, was such an amazing accomplishment. But additionally, we're, we're currently in 20 other countries and we'll probably add uh, maybe another two or three to the mix in the first half of next year as well. Uh, and obviously, as Doug mentioned, the release size is about the same. But as we get a little thinner, because we want to, we want to show some love to our friends overseas as well. So you, it will be seeing a little bit more overseas for people watching outside of the U.S. than, than usual. Yes, uh, I, I think last year was the first time we we sent a, a decent amount over overseas. But uh, we wanted to make sure again. We have a lot of fans. Uh, thank you to our fans in the UK. Yes. Thank you to our fans in Asia as well. Um, I actually, I, I have a, a hard stop this evening because I have to. Uh, the Asian markets open up at, at 9 p.m. on my time, so I have to. I have to go to work in Singapore uh, as soon as we get off here. But uh, the the boss hog is gonna gonna power me through. That no, I'm I'm glad it, it's that'll 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 keep you going and, and allow you to. <laughs> To go to a whole other continent and, and taste. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we were actually in England a couple of years ago hosting some tastings at the um, the JW Marriott, uh, their Grosvenor House in London. And I know they're big fans of what you do. And I, I did five nights in a row there. And every night we started with a, uh, a different whistle pig cocktail. We did like a smoked Manhattan one night and a variety of things. So it's it's fun to see how much it has grown overseas for you all. And the reception has been just so incredible because people love love your whiskey everywhere. Uh, absolutely, I think you know. Again, I, I called Doug. It must. I don't know what time it was his his, his time, but I was at a. Uh, I had a full blitz day. We were just launching the Netherlands, and you know, it was a it was a lot of you know language barrier. Just making sure we were registered accounts that have never heard of us before. It's a lot, you know, a lot of heavy lifting. And right as, as it ended on uh, midnight, I said, you know what, I'll go out for one more cocktail. I'm going to go to the, the, the best industry bar that was close to me. And I, I walked in there just to, to scope out and see what it was, wanted one quick cocktail and go home. And, and sure enough, on the back bar, we found a few bottles of, uh, of piggyback before, way before. We had not shipped any piggyback internationally. So just to see, again, that, that bar wanted to bring in our whiskey was, was probably the coolest thing for me. I, I remember it vividly because I was actually on the road launching our seventh state. I mean, last year we only launched seven. States. And so he's sending me something from the Netherlands, showing me a bottle of piggyback on the back bar that's actually squirreled all the way overseas. And wow, the best form of flattery is things like yeah. that. Those are the things that keep he going hard and as excited as day one when we started with the brand back in early 14. And so, uh, you know, us continuing to see things like that, getting the opportunity to speak uh, to you and kind of go over a new release and, and talk about what's going on at our our, our, our small little 500-acre uh, farm in the middle of nowhere, Vermont, is, uh, is, is a great thing. I mean, we're, we're as fortunate as we could possibly be. Yes, and we're, and we're fortunate that you, uh, that you make such great whiskey, and we always enjoy chatting with you all and just the whole team, the, the energy that you guys bring to the whiskey market and the whiskey industry is is so important. Uh, I see Robin uh, there uh, sipping from Florida, says she is sipping uh, old, an old fashioned made with the 10 year old, but she'd like us to virtually pass her the boss hog. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for watching and all those who are watching around the country and the world uh, that are fans of Whistlepig. I understand that for, uh, for the holidays, maybe a gift to consider if people want to try all three of them, there's a little pack that you guys are doing. Yeah, you know, I think we want to continue to find ways to, to make uh, our whiskey available to more folks. So, you know, for the first time ever, we're commercially selling our 12 and our 50 year in 50 ml. So it's a three pack of our 10 or 12 or 15 year. 
uh, again, the, the perfect, the perfect little stocking stuffer holiday gift. But, uh, you know, the, the hope for us to get a lot of folks, you know, if you, it gives people a chance to try or 15 year, if they haven't had a chance to try it and they're big fans of the 10 or 12 year, it, it's uh, it's just a beautiful way for, for everyone to, to get their hands on our whiskey. Great stocking stuffer to give a whiskey fan that wants to travel just with some little minis, whether it's on the airplane or, or otherwise they're getting to take the, the very best with them. And uh, that's, that's the way it should be. So we'll look forward to those, those three packs uh, very soon. And, the cocktails, the pre-bottled cocktails are coming. When will we see those across the country? Yeah, so uh, we're only traveling them out in a handful of markets. I believe we ship them uh, at the beginning of October to about seven states. Uh, I know it's in the major markets. Um, I, I know it went to, to Florida, D.C., California, Illinois. I'm not sure if it made its way to Texas because it's a four-tier system. It did, yeah. So it, it made it. To the to the major markets, uh, we're we're trialing it out a little bit this year. It was hard to register it. A lot of our distributor partners aren't taking on a lot of new products right now uh, because obviously the climate has been tough. But uh, we hope to to do more with it next year. Excellent, excellent. And the Boss Hog again. This is the seventh one. The Magellan's Atlantic. You'll be looking for a, a nationwide and even internationally at the end of October or so. And again, this is the seventh. Uh, all of them have just been so unique. And I'm sure uh, already, obviously, the whatever will be out next year probably is already in, in the works. The experiments are happening. Uh, it's just always exciting to see uh, what will happen next. Doug, I remember one year, uh, uh, Dave Pickerel, bless his heart, he, he dressed up as Boss Hog from Dukes of Hazard at Tales of the Cocktail. Yeah, he was uh, he was very known for dressing up in his white suit. Uh, yeah. He didn't make all the noises, but he definitely you know, <laughs> he, he, man, he pulled that off to a T. He liked wearing that outfit, man. It was uh, it was actually he was wearing it the last time I saw him. Oh well, that was that was always fun to see him in that. Tom, the uh, the family, his family actually sent us the suit. We have we just got it back. It it's it's hanging in in the, in our office right now. We haven't we haven't decided where to put it on display, but uh, I think for in, in the distillery we have little call out areas for all the different releases. I think his suit's going to probably live in the in the Boss Hog area. But that's uh, incredible. Yeah, what a cool thing. We wanted to make sure that that suit's a little piece of Whistlepig history, so we we, we held on to it. It is an, it's a really amazing experience to go into the distillery and to see the different areas. And, and that'll really be a nice compliment to the boss hog area. That's uh, that's, it's very special that others will get to uh, experience that as well. And uh, one of the things that we got to also taste at the distillery back in March uh, were some of the single barrels. Uh, I know that's a really uh, unique single barrel program. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So to you know, to the, to the Whistle Pig fans and supporters, we love seeing all the photos of the the ten year single barrel out there. You know, our t we it started with our ten year single barrel. Some of the you know, when you talk about the original Boss Hog, that that was really where our barrel program came from. The original Boss Hog was a, a our barrel pick of some really great rye that we had. You know, from there we wanted to keep uh, you know changing it up and adding different layers of complexity to the flavor profile as we matured and. And as our, our ideas started running wild, but we never really wanted to go away from that. So we continued to pull some some stuff, some barrels of tenure that are absolutely you know phenomenal to hold back to allow our customers to do. But you know, I still think you know, obviously I have a, a bias towards Whistle Pig, but I think our twelve year program is truly the coolest barrel mm -hmm. program out there. You know, we love the fact that we can allow our customers and our, our fans to kind of be the master blender for their own whiskey, to give them the three single finishes of Port Sauterne and Madeira, and to blend to your own specifications. Uh, you know, it just, to me, it doesn't get cooler than that. And uh, that program has been just as took off this year, especially with everyone at home. It's been such a fun thing to, to kind of tweak and make sure you get your recipe right. Uh, similarly to what we did with uh, the home stock. Right. And that home, tell us about the home stock too. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think I have a bottle lying around here somewhere. If not, I, I drank it all because it was one of my favorites. But, <laughs> you know, the, the thought there too, you know, we wanted to allow folks, uh, we want, we opened it up to four or so hundred folks that where we sent, sent these kits out with the, the, the blending components. There it is. 
So we did it. We did a live blending session uh, where we were we let everyone kind of vote on their blends, and there were right. we the top three blends, and then we did a taste test uh, with a big group to pick the final one that we would release. Oh. So again, you know, we found a way to let our uh, you know some of our biggest supporters actually create the blend for a commercial release for Whistle Pig. To me, that's that's just that's that's a really special whiskey for us because it, it was really born from from our, our big supporters. You know, what a fun program. And just to see how much it's grown, the, the piggyback, the 10, the 12, the 15, uh, the farm stock, the home stock. I'm always enjoying some of that farm stock too. It's always uh, fun to see what the um, the flavors are on that triple terroir whiskey. Uh, the 18, or is, is the 18 still, is it still out there some? Are you still seeing it? Tell us about that. Yeah, so we had a we had a shipment go out. Uh, we're we're gearing up for another release here. We did one earlier in the year. We got another one coming out uh, around now. Uh, the I think the the really exciting thing about the eighteen years, you know, we we want to we want to continue to add fun fun levels of complexity on that one. I think here's the, you know, I love I absolutely love what our team came up with. I don't know if you can see it on the uh, yes that that beautiful topper. Uh, and then our, our, you know, our team is making sure we have some more fun. You know, you might see some fun come out there with uh, with the topper, similar to what you see with the Boss Hog. It's it, the 18 is is dynamite. So again, if you're a Whistle Pig fan, you've had one of these. First of all, if you've had none of them, try any of them. Uh, but if you've had one of them, it just this is all giving us a chance to continue to explore the array of flavors, the experimentation, the fact that you all do something so limited and so unique every year. Not every distillery does that and, and has that innovation. And I just love what you guys do. So um, well done on all this. One of, one of the beautiful things about being a small and still employee family owned brand is that, you know, uh, and I think it's the first time we've used the word pivot tonight. So I'll say it. We're able to pretty much pivot on a dime in the middle of a pandemic and really do a crowdsourcing blending and have some fun RTD, you know, ready to drink cocktails and really think outside the box and, and, and have fun in the middle of a, a really tough time. Right. There's a lot of, a lot of things that we're, we're, we're thinking at the box. We're always trying and try to think of, you know, what's something that's going to push the envelope. Dave used to always say, be the, 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 the highest pig of the trough, right? We want to continue to always be pushing and making sure that people are looking to us for some of those innovations, because at the end of the day, that's who we are and where we've come from. And it's the fabric of our identity as a brand. It, it absolutely is. And, and also I'll just say this, you know, having been to the farm several times, the way that uh, your whiskey, your brand encompasses Vermont, that region and the way they have latched onto it, created such unique cocktails, dishes in that town, uh, and and just the way it just it just continued to show the love of both Vermont, but but these these barrel finishes, whether it's the port or or, or last year with the Wumeshu or or the it just it it encompasses both local and all over uh, and global. I mean, it just there's just so many elements that that I think make a good whiskey and a great brand are all there in one for Whistle Pig. We're yeah. very fortunate people, and um, you know Vermont's been good. And hopefully everybody in Vermont say we've been good to them and therefore we'll, 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 we'll continue to stay and continue to do great things and, and have fun. And once again, continue to push the envelope and, and more importantly, put more back into Vermont. You know, Greg was talking about the glass topper on the 18. That's a Vermont based product, right? The Danforth pewter, it's a, you know, fifth generation business in Middlebury, just down the street from the farm. Right. And we're the number one customer now with regards to 15 and our boss hog toppers. It, it's, it's a, it makes us feel great that we're also putting money back on me in Vermont, replanting trees when we cut them down on our farm, Vermont Oak for our farm stock and our first fills and also our 15 year finishing barrels with the number four heavy char. So, we're, we're just continuously trying to do as much to give back to Vermont because Vermont's given so much to us. So, and you can, you can also add pig rescuers to that list as well. Uh, Tom, since the last time you were there, the distillery looks a little different. We got, uh, we have two little piglets running around the distillery. We, we built a little stall for them and, uh, you know, you can hear them. They, they smell the whiskey and they want to get after it. So uh, one of which, one of the two pigs we adopted was, uh, was, was blind. So, 
she's our she's our little showstopper. So we're adding we're adding pig re rescuers to the list. Pig rescuers, uh, it's such a and we always enjoy seeing the pigs there. I mean, that was very special to be able to uh, to be reunited with the family and to to go up on the hill and and see uh, and see the pigs. And and the yeah. other thing that you rescued was um, there. Do we are we able to mention the the rescue project at all? So there was uh, a little bit of beer that was kind of yep. going to stay up. Yep. And our CEO had the grand idea of reaching out to some local breweries and using some of that beer that was going to be, you know, basically dumped, right? And then they've got to pay to dump it. And why not use some of that beer to distill and then make some partnerships from that? Right. So um, we don't know what the whiskey's doing just yet. It's so early on to tell. And I've talked to Emily and Megan so many times about the differences of brewing stale or, you know, beer that was from this brewery or, you know, because some of them came in and it was one style of beer. And then the other one was a tanker full of all these different things. So it's very fun and unique for them to like really play around with the different styles and types. And also just the nose of it coming off the, the still is just so, you know, weird I mean, she was like one of them was like fruit loops and the other one you know uh, it, it, it's crazy and cool so yeah once again you know the, the the beer partners that we've always had because we have you know done some partnerships with some breweries and it's important that uh you know we we have some fun at, at the end of the day and send in some barrels to do some different things and you know we're, we're very selective but also we've got some great partners i actually had the barley wine from clown shoes just the other night was really cool and fun, but that was a samurai scientist finished beer. Oh so, wow! Yeah, um, I think that was just released, if I'm not mistaken. Where you got your hands on October. it? Yeah, it came out in October. Yeah, the beginning. Yeah. Incredible. Well, it'll, it'll be exciting to see what happens with that uh, that rescue project. Uh, so many interesting ways to to mark, a, you know, a crazy era, um, but a cool thing that you guys have done to really help those those brewers out. Whistlepigwhiskey.com is the website if you want to poke around on there and uh, and learn more. Um, obviously, if you began this uh, this video uh, midstream, it's going to be up permanently uh, wherever you are watching it. It will also be on our podcast channel as well, and I'll stick that up there, anchor.fm uh, forward slash bourbon blog. If you're a podcast lover, make sure you subscribe to ours. And uh, if, if someone is interested, I know quite often – Gregory, we have uh, establishments, liquor stores that watch this. How can they reach out about a, the single barrel program? Yeah, you know, I, I think the easiest way to do that is I, I wish I gave you my my contact information in advance, but uh, I think we have an info at uh, Whistlepig email address is probably uh, the easiest one to do it. What happens is that that one would get forwarded to me or someone on the barrel team, uh, and that would just be uh, the info at Whistlepig uh, Rye Whiskey. Um, actually, Doug, is that that's right, right? The whistle big one. I believe so. It's been a minute since I've clicked on info on our own website. But yeah, I, yeah. The other that's thing, fun. yeah, is you know, if you are an individual, you can find the the you know FAQ or info site on our website. Right. And more importantly, if you're a retailer or you're somebody interested in the program out to your distributor and or looking on our website for the team member that's in your local market will help facilitate getting you um, the right responses and, and getting the samples and start the ball rolling in the program. Excellent. But we sell them not others. We sell them to some companies. We sell them to individuals. Uh -huh. uh, anybody that wants to buy 132 bottles of age statement, beautiful rye whiskey at proof and put your own name on the, on the side label or, you know, a funny, funny slogan or whatever you decide to do, you know, so many, you know, whiskey clubs and in private groups are doing secondary stickers and, and really being playful with the whiskey, which is way more fun than being serious with the whiskey. Right. So we're, we're happy to see that that's kind of where, where a lot of these uh, have turned, right. Just being, you know, playful with it. So. Of course, of course. And, and the perfect time to do that right now, when uh, we can get the samples, sent to us we can pick out a single barrel this is this is the right time to pick one of those out i know it's so always busy for you guys but i've seen a lot more groups picking out single barrels right now so uh that's uh that's exciting gentlemen it's so great to have you this is like the perfect way on bourbon blog live to uh kick off the week uh 
I don't I don't even know where we could go from here after tasting the Brawl's Hog with you. But uh, amazing, uh, amazing release for the seventh uh, release, the Magellan's Atlantic, which will be out uh, by end of October everywhere. Be looking for this. And if you see a bottle of this uh, or any of the Boss Hogs, uh, but most of those are all already spoken for in years past, but obviously you see this one on the shelf. Get it? Yes, it is in this amazing box that has uh, like a grand like map on it, doesn't it? It's uh, I like this. Great map. Yeah. And a lot of history. I, I'd be in trouble if I forgot to mention that we actually have a Boss Hog uh, 7, so the Roman numeral, the, the VII.com. So if you buy a bottle of Boss Hog 7, you can go to the website and you can register your bottle. But more importantly, you'll get a little bit of a teaser for where Magellan might be heading next. Oh, really? And that's Boss Hog VII? That's correct. So that actually is going to give us a, uh, a little hint of what is to come in the uh, in the future. Yes, sir. Like and what what might happen next year? Is that what you mean? I mean, for for those of you that have read the history book, I'm not going to ruin it for you. <laughs> Maybe if your child's watching, but he doesn't just circle the Atlantic, right? So we're we're gonna we're gonna set sail um, through the Strait that um, is actually named after him, and head to uh, another part of the world. So should be a fun journey, and it it's great that we're actually able to kind of run alongside it and see and showcase what we're doing next. So for the first time, there's there's some kind of teaser aspects and fun level to it. There's a story. There's a, there's a way we can keep on uh, looking forward to what's next and, and be guessing at what might be next. Right. Yep. Excellent. Gregory Gaddy and Doug Ward of Whistlepig, thank you all so much for joining us tonight on Bourbon Blog Live. And uh, what a pleasure to taste the... Uh, the boss hog and a little some of these others with you. It's really been a pleasure, and I hope to have a sip of whistle pick with you both uh, in person when everything's better. We look forward to seeing you guys in person. Are we going to uh, the frozen tundra and do a final toast with our? Uh... Oh yes, yes, that's right. Thank you for it's actually in the frozen tundra. I had to I had to reach down here. We have a. All right, here we go. <sighs> it is Funny. almost the we'll scene. All, <laughs> we'll all smile for the selfie. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>